everybody, it's Jenny from the Missouri Star Quilt Company and I've got a fun project for you today. Take a look at this quilt behind me. Isn't this sweet? This is just a great project. We went through a little bit to get here, so let me tell you about it. I was actually out to dinner with my friend Lynn Hagmeyer from Kansas Troubles and I said to her, I need a really good jelly roll idea. And she said, well, have you done that thing where you put the corners on the things and it makes that pinwheel? And I'm like, no, I haven't. So this is comes to you uh, because of that conversation with my good friend Lynn. So to make this quilt, what you're gonna need is one roll of two and a half inch strips. And we've just used this beautiful roll. It's Artisan Batik Serendipity 3 by Lund Studios for Robert Kaufman Fabrics. You're also gonna need one and a quarter yards of your accent fabric or your pop fabric. And that's this fabric right here. And we've used it in all the pinwheels and in this first border. For the outer border, what you're gonna need is also a yard and a quarter, and it makes this nice big wide six inch border out here. Let me get this string. There we go. All right, now we're good to go. Anyway, um, it's pretty easy to make and it's a lot of fun. Now, one of the things I wanna tell you uh, to start off with is we probably changed this color three times. You know, we'd make a block, we'd look at it, it just didn't pop. So whatever fabric you use, make sure that you use a fabric that's gonna stand out and pop because this pinwheel is the wow factor of the quilt. So uh, le let me show you how to do this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take 36 strips. You're gonna pick some strips right off of here, 36 of them. And we're gonna go ahead and open this up and, uh, and take a look at these strips. So. What you're gonna do with these is they are, you're gonna choose 36, then they're all gonna be cut in six and a half inch strips. Now what I kinda did when I made my blocks was I picked two uh, more prominent colors, like this and maybe this, and then I picked a lighter color for the center, like this. So I kinda kept mine in you know, little groupings that I wanted to put them together in blocks, but basically you can cut the whole thing and then just, um, you know, make it from there and pick and randomly choose them. I just kind of had a little plan when I started and I thought I'd share that with you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and cut these all up into six and a half inch strips. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut my, make sure you can see this, I got all this stuff all over the place. Let me move this down here. I'm gonna cut my selvage edges off and that's generally about a half an inch like that. You probably want to take a look and make sure you got all those little pieces. Now on batiks, th there aren't really selvage edges that show that much. So um, I don't worry about it too much, but if you use regular fabrics, make sure you check. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut six and a half inches. And with my ruler here, what I like to do is I like to just lay it on here sideways. And when I get to the six and a half line, I can just cut those chunks like this and move that out of the way and then slide my ruler up here, six and a half, just like this. And you're gonna cut all 36 of your strips just like that. Okay, you also need to cut your um, background fabric. There's my strip. And you're also gonna need to cut that background fabric. And we're eventually what we wanna get to is these two and a half inch squares. And so again, I just cut two and a half inch strips and subcut those into two and a half inch squares and then we're ready to go. So normally when we make a quilt like this, we're gonna sew all of our strips together and make strip sets. And this one just doesn't work that way. We've gotta put a little snowball, but our snowball has to go the opposite direction. So it needs to be put on some of these strips. Now for our snowballs, we're gonna cut two and a half inch strips, nine of them, and subcut them into two and a half inch squares. Now the cool thing about this block is that all the snowballs get to go on exactly the same way. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna select three different strips from your six and a half inch pile. And you're gonna choose one for the middle and then your snowballs go on the other two. And the snowballs, even though they're opposite, they go on the same direction. So I'm gonna iron a line right here and you can finger press it or iron it. And um, we're just gonna match up these little corners and iron a line. You can also draw the line, it works. And then when you put these on like this, they're gonna go exactly the same direction. So let me show you that because it's, it's a little bit of an illusion. So we're gonna put this up like this. So here, let me show you. 
So this one's going to go this way and this one's going to go this way. So the main bulk of our snowball is against the seam. So what we're going to do though, when you turn these, you see that they're exactly the same. So when we go to snowball ours, you're just going to snowball, you can just chain piece them and go through one after the other after the other and do it and end up with these blocks. So let's take these to the sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set these, my little squares, match them up at the top. And then I'm going to sew right on the line. And there we go. And this one, remember, they all go the same direction. Now, one of the things you want to watch is that because all your blocks are going to go the same direction, you need to make sure that you put them together all the same way. Because if you, if you do it backwards, they won't match up. So these all have to be sewn on exactly the same way. All right, let's trim this edge off right here. And just like this. And just like this. And then we're going to press those back. There we go. All right. Now what I want to do, because I already have some made, I want to make sure that they're going the same direction. So I'm going to put this one on here like this and this one on here like that. So this way our blocks, see here's my other blocks that I've made to finish this off. They're going to all match up and when you put four of these together like this, watch this. Look how cool. You just rotate them like you'd rotate a fence rail and then it's going to form that little pinwheel right in the center. So it's a really cool way to do it. So let's sew these three together so we can uh, finish up our block. Now remember that this, the, you know, the most, the biggest part of your accent fabric goes into the seam. That's a, a way I had to remember it just because the, um, you know, on the other ones, it's, you know, if, if it was the opposite way, we could snowball it, but it's not. All right, there's one side. Now we're going to attach that other side to finish our block. And again, I'm putting the, my large part of the fabric next to the seam. All righty. Now let's press this open. Isn't this just the cutest little block? So now let's see how it works. Look at that, fits just perfectly and it makes the pinwheel that we wanted. So how you're gonna put this quilt together is you're gonna do it in rows. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna lay one block with your fabric going horizontally, one block vertically, one block horizontally like this, and one block vertically, just like that. And then when you start adding your second rows in down here, this block, you're going to make sure that this is horizontal. This one's got to be vertical. It's going to come together and it's going to make that pinwheel just like that. So let's look at the quilt, how it comes together. So this is, this is just so sweet and it is eight blocks across, all the way across, nine rows. And what we did was, again, just vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. The fun thing is once you get this block done where your pinwheel comes in the center, all your corners are set up for the next pinwheel, that secondary pinwheel, and it's just darling. For the back, I think I forgot to tell you, you're gonna need four and a half yards. Isn't that a pretty backing? For your binding, you're gonna need three quarters of a yard of binding, and if I ever forget to tell you any of that information, it's always just in the description below. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial on our spring twist quilt from the Missouri Star Quilt Company.